Language is perhaps the most defining feature of humanity. It allows us to share ideas, to plan, to tell stories. For a long time, scientists believed this incredible ability belonged to us, and us alone. But what about our closest relatives? Could a Neanderthal hold a conversation? The search for an answer takes us into the realm of bones, genes, and tools. The first clue lies in a tiny, horseshoe-shaped bone in the throat, the hyoid. This bone is crucial for speech, as it supports the root of the tongue and anchors muscles needed for the fine control of modern language. For decades, its absence in the fossil record was a key argument for the dumb Neanderthal theory. Then, in 1989, a nearly identical hyoid bone was discovered in a Neanderthal skeleton in Israel. Anatomically, theirs was just like ours. This was the first major piece of evidence that their vocal hardware was capable of producing a wide range of sounds. But anatomy is only one part of the puzzle. The real blueprint for language is written in our DNA. Here, the evidence becomes even more startling. We now know that Neanderthal shared a key gene with us, Fox Psu. This gene is often called a language gene, though it's more accurately a gene involved in the fine motor control of the face and mouth, and the neural development necessary for language. Mutations in FOXP2 in humans cause severe speech and language disorders. The fact that Neanderthals had the same modern human version of this gene is a powerful hint that they had the biological capacity for complex speech. Beyond biology, we have to look at their behavior. Could they have accomplished what they did without complex communication? Their hunting strategies required coordinated, silent teamwork to take down massive, dangerous game. Their sophisticated tool-making techniques, like the Livawa method, weren't instinctual. They had to be taught, learned, and passed down through precise instruction. This kind of cultural transmission is incredibly difficult, without a detailed language to explain how and why. So, if they could talk, what did they sound like? Their bulkier anatomy suggests their voices would have been different from ours, likely higher pitched and less efficient at producing the full range of vowels we use. Their language might have been more consonant heavy, but the evidence strongly suggests they had a language. It was probably complex, capable of discussing past events and future plans. The question is shifting from if they could speak to how they spoke. The evidence from their bones, their genes, and their sophisticated culture points overwhelmingly to one conclusion. They were not silent brutes. They were a talking, communicating people. They likely sat around their fires, not in silence, but sharing stories, teaching lessons, and making plans. The Ice Age world wasn't a quiet place. It was filled with the voices of another kind of human, whose conversations we can only try to imagine.